Well, didn't hit that 49ers team total under on Monday Night Football, even though Christian McCaffrey didn't even play. But we did go 3-0 with our baseball plays yesterday here on the Power 5. Also ended up with a no action in Mets Blue Jays, if you're wondering uh, why we didn't have five results. So it's an incredible 62-32-4 overall run on this show the last three weeks. One more time, that's 62-32-4. Wow, smash that like button if you've been enjoying all these free winners here on the Power 5. On today's show, we're going to be discussing some of my favorite pitchers to fade. You know who's coming. Plus, an early look for Saturday College Football. As a reminder, you can always comment down below with any questions or thoughts on my five selections for Tuesday. We start play number one, Nationals. First five run line, plus half a run. Around minus 125 to get that plus half a run. Nationals are hosting the Braves, 645 Eastern time. In my opinion, this is a great spot to be fading Atlanta. Two reasons. One is the schedule. Nats are at home and had Monday off. Meanwhile, the Braves... They have to travel after losing one nothing to the Reds yesterday. Remember, I gave out Reds' first five run line on Monday's edition of the Power Five. Yes, the Braves' starting rotation did continue its streak. It's now 28 consecutive games with three or fewer runs allowed. Just to clarify, that's the starting rotation has allowed three earned runs or less in 28 consecutive games, not the whole team. However, scoring has been a problem for the Braves all season long, especially recently. Over the last nine games, Atlanta's been held to three runs or less seven times. One of the two exceptions was a game that went 11 innings. Again, they were shut out last night. So I like the matchup for uh, Washington starter Mackenzie Gore. He has turned in three consecutive quality starts, guys, with a two ERA and a .89 whip. Second reason I like the Nats here today is because Atlanta starter Reynaldo Lopez owns a very fadeable 4.11 expected ERA. Don't be fooled. By that 2.04 actually RA. This guy's a fraud. Lopez, he also owns a completely unsustainable 87.3% strand rate. That's number one in all of baseball. You can't keep uh, leaving that many ducks on the pond. Eventually, those runners that get on base are going to get home against Lopez. About two weeks ago, the Nats beat the Braves with Lopez on the mound. 5-1 as $1.70 underdogs. Here we'll back them. First five plus half a run and leave the bullpens out of it. So that's Washington first five run line. Number two, Blue Jays full game plus 115 versus the Mets. You knew this one was going to make the power five for today, didn't you? That's because David Peterson's back on the hill for the Mets and I am determined to keep fading this man. He's the only starter in all of baseball with a bigger negative gap than Reynaldo Lopez when it comes to actual than uh, actual and expected ERA. Peterson's actually ERA. 2.75. That sounds nice, but his expected ERA is 4.87. Yes, Peterson has made me look foolish on a number of occasions recently, including his last time out when he had 11 strikeouts on his birthday. But we did cash the over in that game, thanks to the Red Sox bullpen. Here, we're just going to go against Peterson for the game. Yes, the Mets, they're 10-1, and their last 11 games, 6-0 and the last six times Peterson started. I get it, but the regression monster comes for everyone eventually, and it's going to come for Peterson tonight. Toronto, despite a weak offensive showing last night, they're fourth in WRC Plus since the All-Star break. How about that? Uh, The bullpen for Toronto, they've blown leads each of the last two days, but not today. Blue Jays plus 115 for the full game is my call there. Number three, Red Sox first five will lay the half run. So first five run line minus 0.5 versus the Orioles. This one is on TBS. So I want to give all, all of you who are watching TV tonight something to bet on. Red Sox won the series opener and did so in dominating fashion, 12-3. I can't guarantee you this one's going to be that easy. However, Baltimore slumping a bit right now, uh, losing three straight and four of five. Starting for the O's tonight, Albert Suarez. He just gave up a career-high three home runs his last time out and ended up allowing six runs on eight hits overall. That was against the White Sox. We're getting the better color Sox in this one. Cutter Crawford going for the Red Sox. And while he's winless over his last four starts, he has a very respectable 3.52 ERA during that span, allowing three earned runs or less every time out. This is a massive series for Boston, no doubt about it. I don't want anything to do with that hideous bullpen of theirs, but I'll back the Red Sox first five and will lay the half run to get a plus price. How about a team total for you? Number four on the Power Five today is Twins over four and a half runs against the Angels. Now, if you caught my appearance on Wager Talk today, Monday, you know playing Twins' first five run line did not work out. Minnesota actually ended up losing to the Angels 6-2, to as a matter of fact. 
This is a team, the Twins, that badly need a win right now. They're th- just three games up on three different teams, Red Sox, Mariners, and Tigers, for that third and final wild card spot in the American League. I don't have much regard for this Angels team, as I said yesterday, even though they won last night's series opener. That doesn't change, okay? I especially don't have much regard for tonight's starter for the Halos, Griffin Canning. He's 0-9 on the road this season, guys, with a 5.24 ERA. And we don't want to leave the Angels' bullpen out of it either. Meanwhile, the Twins, they're sending out Pablo Lopez. He's allowed just three runs total his last four starts. Remember, we backed him in the first five his last time out against the Rays. Lopez not really part of the betting equation here uh, since we're back taking the Twins over their team total of four and a half. But I think him being on the bump tonight should calm the Twins down as they look to break out of this slump. I think they break out the bats as well. Over four and a half on their team total is what I'm doing here. All right, before we get to the college football play for Saturday, I want to let you know you can get my top Major League Baseball bet for Tuesday for only $5. That's right. Head on over to wt.buzz slash bp right now, and you can save $20 on my $4 best bet for tonight. Monday's loan client selection, easy winner. Did it again over Cubs Dodgers. I'm now a red-hot 24-11-1 in all sports over the last 17 days. 6-1 and one my last 7 in the MLB, including a perfect 3-0 the last 3 days. Not to mention it was a winning week 1 in the NFL. And I'm on a 25-11 and 11 run in college football going back to last season, including a 67% start 6-3. and three. This season, for a limited time, you can get the next 30 days of my NFL and college football winners for just $199. That's less than $50 per week. No coupon code needed. Again, just head over to wt.buzz slash pp. All right, let's wrap up the Power Five. Every Tuesday here on the Power Five, I have promised you an early look at the college football card. Last week, I said to take Northern Illinois at plus 28 or better. And guess what? Huskies didn't even need those four touchdowns. They beat Notre Dame outright. That was a 3% client play for years truly. I don't think this week's early look is going to be quite as interesting, but it's another game where I'm anticipating an outright upset, and it's East Carolina plus two and a half versus Appalachian State. Quite simply, I think the wrong team's favored here. App State off a humiliating loss to Clemson last week, and I think they're going to struggle to get up for ECU. Meanwhile, ECU overcame four turnovers last week to win on the road. Yes, it was only 20-14 to 14 at Old Dominion, but remember, ODU had hung tough with South Carolina the previous week. Given that South Carolina just clobbered Kentucky on the road, The fact ECU outgained ODU by almost 200 yards looks a lot more impressive coming into the season. The expectation in Greenville uh, was that ECU would improve their one loss record by a lot. Winning games like this one goes a long way towards improvement. Again, I'm taking the Pirates plus two and a half. You may want to wait and see if this goes back to plus three. Then again, I think the Pirates win it outright. I think money line play is also warranted. All right, quick recap of the Power Five. I threw a lot at you today. Uh, Number one, Nationals, first five run line, plus a half a run against the Braves. Two, Blue Jays, full game, plus 115 versus the Mets. David Peterson, you will lose today. Number three, Red Sox, first five run line, minus half a run versus the Orioles. Number four, Twins, over their team total of four and a half against the Angels. Number five, East Carolina, plus two and a half versus App State. Early look for Saturday. College football. You can let me know what you think of those selections by commenting down below. A reminder again, tonight's 4% best bet in MLB is available for just $5. It's going to be $5 picks all over the place at Wager Talk every Tuesday now. I'm on a 24 and 11. All sports run the last 17 days. So get it right now. You can also get the next 30 days of football, NFL, and college for $199. I'll remind you about that as well. Also a reminder to subscribe to the Wage Talk YouTube channel if you already haven't done so. Not only am I dropping the Power 5 daily, Morning Wager with myself and Mark Zinno every Monday through Friday as well. That's going to do it for the Tuesday edition of the Power 5. Smash that like button if you already haven't done so. Let's keep rolling, guys. Until next time, we'll cash some tickets.